Hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland and here you can see number 222 Hans Square London. This uh, door there, yeah, the extreme uh, door on this edge of this building. Um, and this is where the Sinn Féin delegation stayed in 1921 because it's a hundred years ago today that a treaty was signed at number 10 Downing Street. It was signed in the wee hours of the morning after an intense almost all night negotiation session. So negotiations have been going on in some form since um, um, the 11th of July 1921 when the, the truce was declared and the conflict throughout Ireland um, largely came to a halt. Although the loyalist terrorists, they continued their bestial attacks upon the Catholic uh, civilian population of Belfast and surrounding uh, districts. Uh, anyhow, so Michael Collins and others um, stayed here, uh, Robert Barton, um, Erskine Childers being uh, clerk to the delegation, um, Arthur Griffith was here as well. So um, I don't want to go too much into the background, to the background, but uh, there was that true sign between the Crown Forces and the Irish Republican Army, IRA. So the IRA was um, an underground insurgent force uh, fighting against the British Army and the Royal Irish Constabulary, RIC the RIC being the police in Ireland at the time. But uh, by 1921, they were scarcely carrying out um, uh, ordinary police duties, except in the Northeast. They were mostly a counterinsurgent force. So um, a uh, guerrilla campaign had been fought and around 2,000 people had been killed uh, between um, January uh, 1919 and July 1921. Obviously the very next day, the 12th of July, was a day um, sacred to Orangemen who were celebrating the victory of um, um, William, the Stadtholder of the Netherlands, over his uncle and um, father-in-law, James II, at the Battle of the Boyne uh, in 1690. So it might have been a tense, uh, glorious 12th for the Orangemen. That's what they call it, the glorious 12th. Um, so on what basis could these Sinn Féiners be asked here to London? Because they'd been execrated by um, His Majesty's government. King George V was the monarch at the time. Um, uh, it was Lloyd George, his Prime Minister. David Lloyd George said, we have murder by the throat. He dismissed the IRA as a murder gang, but the Crown forces had not been very successful in combating them. Now, the IRA's level of success shouldn't be overstated either. Um, there are people who are died in the world Republicans are a bit blinkered about this and saying, oh yes, it was an absolute triumph. They wiped the floor with the Crown forces. So the IRA, they obviously killed a few hundred soldiers and police officers, but they only controlled really tiny areas of the countryside, maybe some of West Cork, some of South Tipperary, that the, that the um, Crown forces wouldn't go to even in daylight hours. And there were some counties which were completely tranquil, where not a single RIC officer was killed. So um, they say the King's writ didn't run in Ireland. Well, there'll be some counties where that's true, and some uh, local councils would send their minutes to, uh, to the Sinn Féin uh, administration. Others would still send them to Dublin Castle, even in West Cork. If you read Guerrilla Days in Ireland by Tom Barry, he says that. But anyway, it was decided by um, the British government to invite the Sinn Féin delegation on the basis that they were MPs. They'd been elected to the UK House of Parliament. Um, so Michael Collins was uh, the MP for South Armagh. Now he never re entered Westminster because of course that would have um, required him to take uh, an oath before God to his sovereign Lord, King George V, which he refused to do. So um, anyhow, he had numerous other titles. What other hats did he wear? He was um, chairman of the Supreme Council of Fenians, that's the IRB, Irish Republican Brotherhood, this shadowy um, semi-secret fraternity which existed since 1858. And according to Irish Republican mythology, the chairman of the IRB was also the president of the Irish Republic, the non-existent Irish Republic. So the IRB was sort of a movement within a movement. Um, and there was a clique within that which controlled the IRA. And this all came out when the Civil War started in 1922. Um, and he was director of finance for the IRA, he was director of intelligence and so on. So he spent almost all that conflict in Dublin um, hiding in plain sight. Uh, but the, for some reason, the press got a hold of his name and almost any major IRA attack, the newspapers would say that he had led it. Um, so they rather bigged up his, op 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 his reputation. Although obviously he was quite important to the IRA, but mostly in terms of espionage and um, um, killing people who were alleged informants for the Crown. Of course, some of them really were informants for the, for the UK government. Uh, so as MPs, they were invited here and they then went to negotiate at number 10 Downing Street with, uh, with um, uh, Lloyd George, with Sir Winston, well, Winston Churchill, it wasn't Sir yet, who was Secretary of State for the Colonies, not that we were ever a colony in Ireland, and a few other cabinet ministers, with the Earl of Birkenhead, who remember had been a stalwart of the Alzheimer's cause in 1912, um, and uh, a few others. So negotiations went on in a desultory fashion, 
um, Sean McBride, son of the chap who was executed for the Easter Rising, John McBride, Sean McBride went back and forth between um, uh, London and Ireland at weekends carrying mails. Uh, they don't want to send things by, by, by telegram because they could be too easily read and how the negotiations were progressing. Eamon de Valera was um, pre of era. He was supposedly our, our head of state. He started himself president, gone to the United States, introduced himself as the president of the Irish Republic. Why didn't he come and negotiate? But uh, were plenty of potentiary powers um, conferred on this delegation or not? Anyhow, so they, they hammered um, out this deal finally, although Di Valera did come here at one point, and there's a famous photo of a woman, presumably Irish, kneeling down to kiss his ring as though he's a cardinal when he was going into Downing Street briefly. Um, but uh, now the IRA had blown its cover all over the south of Ireland. It was a heady moment for young Republicans in the summer of 1921, and the Trusilliers, they called them, all these Johnny Come Latelys who joined um, the IRA just when the conflict appeared to be over, when it was very safe to do so, and they could stomp around with their chests puffed out without taking any danger. But um, because they'd come out in the open, the guys who'd been um, uh, clandestine IRA members, the Crown Forces had a very good idea who they were. So if the conflict were to recommence, then the Crown Forces would really have the upper hand because they know people were. How badly was the conflict going for either side beforehand? It's difficult to say. The Customs House had been burnt just before the truce. Now, um, and that had destroyed some records for the government. But um, is, it, is it seven IRA men been killed? Uh, up to 100 members of the Dublin Brigade captured. And if they were interrogated, they might prove to be a mine of information. Um, you know, so, so Colin supposedly said they had us dead beat, we couldn't have lasted another six weeks. And there, there are contradictory reports from Crown Forces unit, uh, units around Ireland saying that the, the conflict was, was progressing well for them or that it was going badly. So um, the evidence is rather inconclusive. But uh, the, the, the public wasn't really willing to fight um, uh, against the IRA very much because the UK just came out of the First World War, 750,000 men killed. Now, obviously, the conflict in Ireland was, was a skirmish compared to the First World War, but the UK was struggling under this crushing weight of national debt. Um, the IRA had been uh, pursuing a campaign of misinformation warfare, depicting um, the Crown Forces as absolutely sadistic uh, monsters. Now, the Crown Forces didn't always help themselves. There were some who were indisciplined, and there were some who committed crimes, even a few murders. But, uh, of course, the first um, casualty of war is truth. So they've been quite effective in besmirching the Crown Forces' reputation um, in Ireland uh, and abroad. Um, anyway, so negotiations were ongoing and David Lloyd George reminded them that if they didn't sign, then the conflict was going to resume because, of course, that is the default setting. And he'd said the same to the German delegation at Versailles. Now, Collins thought the negotiations could well break down and the conflict could recommence. So he kept an aeroplane at London Airport, Croydon, to try and make a sharp exit if it ever came to that. But actually, that, that proved unnecessary. So um, he then wrote a letter to a friend just hours after he put his signature to this treaty, which said that the 26 um, southern counties of Ireland would leave the United Kingdom, form the, uh, form the Irish Free State, and it specifically said this is going to be analogous to the situation of Canada within the British Empire, and then this Parliament of Southern Ireland will be elected, and the people elected there too will take uh, an oath of loyalty to um, uh, George V, who's King of Ireland as opposed to King of Great Britain and Ireland. Um, but Ireland suggests the whole of Ireland, but he's also King of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Um, but uh, Ireland's often being a synecdoche for the, for the 26 counties. And various things. Now, the uh, Crown Forces were allowed to remain in Ireland, but in only, in only um, three bases um, in the 26 counties and could occupy more if needs be. In time of war or strained relations, we had to pay a share of the UK's national debt, various things like that. Um, external, so, so, so we we're still part of the British Empire. Um, anyway, so they went back to, to Dublin and uh, it, was, it was debated before um, Doyle Aaron, every single member of whom was a Sinn Féinar. It's thought if they'd cuddled immediate vote, they would have voted against. And some people said, let's arrest them immediately for high treason. Cahill Brew, that Englishman, suggested it. Okay, he's half Irish too. Now, Erskine Childers, who was against the treaty, was actually the clerk of it. Arthur Griffith was ardently in favour. Remember, he's the founder of Sinn Féin, was a dual monarchist, the resurrection of Hungary and all that. Now, Michael Collins had been unswervingly obdurate up until this point. So some people think, well, he couldn't believe that he would sign something that wasn't acceptable. If it's good enough for Mick, it's good enough for me. So there's a bit of a personality clash between the big fellow and the long fellow, as to say, Collins and Di Valera. Um, but anyway, they didn't take an immediate vote on it. And the TDs, as in Chokta Dolly, went back to their constituencies. And over the Yuletide season, they, they conferred with their constituencies, constituents between, between the festivities, and they returned to um, Bolia Aklia, 
in, in, in the spring and they voted on it and they voted um, by a majority of seven votes that they would accept it. So that's another thing Sinn Féin has got to remind. Sinn Féin negotiated this deal. Sinn Féin signed this deal. Sinn Féin voted for this deal, even though it was a narrow majority. Um, just like Sinn Féin have agreed to partition again in 1998, agreed that Northern Ireland is rightfully part of the United Kingdom again, signed that agreement in 1998, and then a campaign for that agreement, voted for that agreement in 1998. So anyway, it's, it's a momentous moment, this centenary. So hours after it, um, Colin said, will anyone be satisfied with this treaty? Will anyone? I tell you this morning, I signed my own death warrant because some um, uncompromising Republicans would find it unacceptable. And I noticed this media van here by RTE, Radio Television Erin, which is uh, the Republic of Ireland's main um, channel, TV channel. We've got, well, it's got a few channels. You know, RT1, Network 2, Tina G, and obviously radio stations. So they're gonna be doing something about it this evening. So yeah, it's a very a significant event, 100 years ago today. So they must've come back here in the small hours to this a very fine house on Hand Square, named after another Irishman who did very well here in London. Um, and that was, um, that was Sir Hans Sloan who was a physician from Killalay County Down, who came here came and became very wealthy um, and uh, set up that, that physic garden in Chelsea and things like that. Sloan Square, which is hard by, is named in his honor. Anyway, that's enough from me. I hope you found that uh, just a little bit informative at least. Um, obviously, the treaty was gradually undone by, by perfidy on the behalf of um, a successive Irish governments, and the UK just rolled over and accepted it. Um, uh, the Finnafall got in and they dropped the oath to the king uh, obviously, we abolished the monarchy in 1949 and Easter Monday, uh, very significantly, I picked that date. And um, Neville Chamberlain was moronic enough to agree to withdraw Crown forces from the south of Ireland, getting absolutely nothing in return, not even a recognition of Northern Ireland's legitimate place within the United Kingdom. So that was game, set and match to, to um, uh, De Valera in 1938 when he got that. So De Valera, he was mildly against this treaty and he proposed document two. Uh, his alternative external association. Being a mathematician, he wrote two circles which didn't intersect, which touched on the edge. This was gonna be Ireland, this is gonna be the British Empire. And um, as some, some Republicans rightly said, Erskine, Childers, Cahill, Peru, if we, if we ratify this treaty, which of course we did, then that would be us voluntarily saying that Ireland is rightfully part of the British Empire, which of course we did say, um, and, and so forth. That's enough from me. Please follow me and book online lessons for me in history, politics, religious studies elocution, debating. I'm a tour guide in London, so look me up and donate to me on PayPal. Thank you, everyone. Toodle pip.